know that things have been hard lately with the exposure of our kids to social media, screen time, television, all the networks, all the internet, all the games, the video games, connecting with people they don't know through um, gaming and um, Instagram and Facebook and all the new things, TikTok, they're exposed to too much. So how can I protect my children against the peer pressure and the harmful effects of the external factors? First of all, we need to acknowledge that this is hard on us and that's okay. We need to accept the fact that there is a lot that us as parents don't know. And admitting this would make us more open to trying to learn and trying to understand and ask questions and be in a curious state rather than being in only in fear and worry and um, reflecting our stress on the kids. So it's okay to say that I'm not very aware of everything that they're using, especially the things that are changing, changing very fast, moving very fast. So it's good to give yourself the space to learn and be up to date and ask your children and listen to them when they're trying new things, when they're ex being exposed to something new. Try as much as you can to make your feedback calm um, accepting rather than showing stress or um, extreme worry because this would make them by time stop talking about things that they get exposed to. Um, so let's start by talking about how peer pressure is. First of all, it's sometimes very subtle. So it doesn't necessarily have to be someone pushing my child to do something in a different way. Sometimes it goes that far, but sometimes it's just seeing people around me doing uh, things different from what I do and my family does. So it's um, confusing sometimes. It, I want to be accepted, I want to fit, I want to be popular with what's generally accepted. Uh, I don't want to feel rejected, I don't want to, be, to feel judged. So sometimes I do things just to avoid all these feelings. And a very important thing for us as parents is to try to put our focus on what we can control. Uh, being frustrated about what other kids are doing, what other families are doing, what other parents are doing, how social media is like, it's just gonna leave us feeling more helpless, more hopeless, and um, more stressed out. What can we control? We can control our own behavior, we can control what we do our, at home, our dialogues with our kids, our responses to what they bring home. So remind yourself that focusing on what you can control is going to give you more control over your life and is going to make your stress level and how you deal with these things a lot calmer and more peaceful. We need to remember that sometimes peer pressure is positive. Not all peer pressure is negative. So we, when we hear the word peer pressure, we always think of the negative effect. But there is usually also some positive peer pressure effect like when my child, if my child is supported by a group of friends who are successful, who are, uh, have good social skills, who have uh, high dreams, who are, have good experiences, sometimes it have, can have a good uh, effect. So it's good to help the child see that the effect they can get from their friend and from the outside community doesn't have to be negative. They can focus on the positive and try to get more of it, which is usually easier than just trying to focus on not getting the negative effect. So if I'm looking for what's positive around me and trying to focus on it, it might help uh, in making things a lot, uh, a lot easier on them. It's always important to keep an eye on signs of changes that are due to peer pressure. So if suddenly my child is very resistant to uh, what we've been used to doing, they're suddenly ch starting to change the way they dress, the way they talk, uh, the way they handle things. They're doing behaviors that we can tell that they have not learned at home. Sometimes we see this even at very young age, like when a child uh, learns something at daycare, for instance, but it's a lot more obvious when they're getting older and they are being exposed to a lot more things. So keep an eye on signs. Am I, is my child doing things that seem a bit strange for him, for her character, for uh, what I ex usually see or expect from her? And also we need to acknowledge that sometimes peer pressure is hard. 
and when we help them by telling them that we know it's hard, it's not always easy to do something that not everyone is doing. It's sometimes very challenging to stand up for your values when others are not. It's, um, we live in a world when it's not easy to live and be yourself. So when we help them see that it's hard, that's, this is a lot more helpful than just expecting to tell them it's very easy, I do it all the time. This is making them feel that something is wrong with them, while actually standing up for your values sometimes is very challenging. So what can help in helping our children have um, a minimal effect? Or if, In all cases, they're going to be affected. They're going to be affected by the external factors and peer pressure, and this is not something that we can control. But how can we make this effect not very strong, not shaking for their values, not um, very confusing? How can we help them going through this rather than trying to avoid it? Because in a lot of time, it's going to be unavoidable. So first of all, like I would always be mentioning, it's our relationship. Do they trust us? Do they believe in what we tell them? Do they know that we get them? We get how things are hard for them sometimes, what they're going through, what's happening in their life? Because this is the base of everything. If we have a strong relationship and a strong bond, we would be able to be there for them and they would come back to us when they're facing something challenging or hard and talk to us and give us a chance to help them rather than being scared of how our reaction would be. We also talked about the importance of self-esteem and how um, me being feeling good about myself helps me stand against what I'm, what I'm seeing outside. If I feel bad about myself, I would be a lot more effect, affected by what's happening around me because I'm always looking for acceptance. I'm always looking for something that's making me feel good about myself. So working on this on the long term, how I'm helping my child see their own value, focus on what they believe in, not what, others, uh, what other people think, um, learn to accept themselves and love themselves even if they're different because they're always going to be different in their own way. It's going to help them stand against anything that's coming from the outside or at least minimize the effect of it on them. We also need to have balance between sticking to our values and accepting the facts that some things are different, some things are changing fast, some things are, uh, they at a point of time, they will need to make their own mistakes, try new things. Um, as long as we're keeping things grounded, we're dealing, we're admitting mistakes, we're trying to help them learn from it and fix it, it's okay, we all make mistakes, we all learn from our mistakes. There is no person, it's not something that we can avoid. And it's very important to be aware of what our kids are exposed to, especially now that at a very young age, kids start getting exposed to uh, screens, to uh, uh, internet, uh, and sometimes they're not ready yet to deal with that. So it's a good idea to keep a lot of monitoring, especially at the beginning. We need to think of uh, internet and social media as if we're leaving our children in a place with people that they don't know, that we don't know. So they will not always be ready for that. We need to help them be ready for that. We need to empower them with skills to understand what's accepted, what's not accepted, how to protect themselves, how to say no when it's not accepted. And this is the last point I'm going to talk about today because helping children um, set boundaries is very important. We want our children to be assertive. We want our children to know how to say no. And how are they going to learn this if they don't have this right at home? So it starts from us setting clear boundaries and being clear about them and being firm about them. And at the same time, accepting that sometimes, especially when it comes to something related to their personal decisions, to I'm talking about something as simple as what they eat, if they're hungry or not. Um, if they have a space to make some decisions, if they don't like something, expressing it out and getting a feedback, feedback that this is accepted and they have the right to say, to say no sometimes, they would start practicing this with others as well. Having a strong-willed child, for instance, people, sometimes parents see this as a bad thing. They keep labeling them as stubborn. While actually, if I help the child understand the good side of this, that sometimes that we like about them, that they know what they want, that they're persistent, that they are um, clear about 
what they can and cannot do. As they grow up, they learn to do this with others as well. So we need to ask ourselves, do I want my child to be submissive and just agree and listen without understanding? Or do I want them to learn from an early age to understand what they, why they are asked to do something, to have an open discussion, to say when something is not making sense and not do something that they are not convinced with, so they would be able to do that with the whole world. Thank you so much and I'll see you next time.